I just spent hours building this beautiful sunflower farm in The Sims and then half the footage got corrupted and I thought it was lost forever, but I managed to fix it. So the speed build is saved. And now I wanna show you how I built this house. This is a long one. So let's just dive straight into the build and then I can walk you through kind of the inspiration and what we're doing here. I'm building this on a 40 by 30 lot in Chestnut Ridge. That's the world that came with Horse Ranch. You'll be able to see in a minute because there's a giant horse rock behind us in the background of the world. It will become very immediately obvious where we're building because there's a lot of horse stuff around the exterior of the lot, but I didn't put anything for horses on this house specifically. The inspiration here was literally just sunflowers. I kind of got to thinking, you know what? I'm feeling like building a farm. I kind of want it to be yellow. And then I was like, oh my God, yellow farm, sunflower farm. <laughs> and so that's where this came from. I should clarify, there's not actually sunflowers that you can grow in the game. Yes, it's a sunflower farm, but like a pretend one. It's a farmhouse that's got a whole bunch of sunflowers in the front as part of the landscaping. I built this live on my Twitch channel first. And a lot of people in the chat were like, wait, there's sunflowers in The Sims. And yes, there are sunflowers, but just like as regular landscaping, they're just flowers in the base game. So they are base game, everybody has them, but they're not like a crop that you can grow, if that makes sense. And as far as the exterior goes on this house, I wanted it to be very fancy. I was kind of channeling slightly Victorian inspired vibes. We've got some pretty bay windows and this beautiful like rounded wraparound porch. I used a lot of Strangerville in this build with the windows and the doors and like the columns and spandrels and stuff. And the house itself is kind of just like an old white farmhouse, but it's got a lot of yellow accents. So like yellow shutters on the windows and, and yellow details on the columns and stuff like that. I was actually really happy with the shape of the building too. I feel like I did some kind of weird things. So I was using a lot of rounded parts with these like bay window shapes. And it was hard to do the roof at first, but I think it kind of came together. This is the kind of thing that just takes some experimenting. You try and do some weird shapes and it kind of throws it off for a minute. But once you get it working, it really works. The house also really isn't all that big. It's like a three bedroom house. I only put one bathroom in this one. The yard and the lot around it is absolutely huge. So it's a 40 by 30 lot, but the house is really kind of tiny. And you'll notice that I put it way far back on the lot. It's like way towards the back. And that's because I made the entire front of the lot, the sunflower field. So I filled the entire thing with flowers. We do have a normal backyard where I put like a greenhouse and some little like kids playground equipment and stuff. But I made that a lot smaller. I'm kind of pretending that the lot is smaller than it is. And I know I built it in the horse ranch world and I like didn't add anything for horses, but I kind of like to imagine that this lot is like bigger than it seems, which I know is the opposite of what I just said. But part of what I like so much about Chestnut Ridge is that it really looks like the environment is part of the lot. Like back behind this, they have that corral sort of space with the horse stuff in it. And it really looks like that belongs to us. Like it looks like that's on our property, even though in the game, we only actually have this 40 by 30 rectangle, but it all just blends in together so nicely. They even have this beautiful like dirt path, dirt road with a truck on it, which is honestly kind of taunting us because of course we don't have any trucks in the game. <laughs> there are no cars or anything, but they've got this pretty fake one right next door. I've built stuff like this in Henford on Bagley before, and I've put like actual trucks and stuff because those lots are a little bit bigger. This one's only 40 by 30, so I, I didn't put any of that. I really saved all of the exterior space for sunflower. And I'm not kidding when I say I put sunflowers everywhere on this, like everywhere. <laughs> I ended up using a combination of the Strangerville columns and fences and spandrels. And then I mixed and matched horse ranch stuff actually for the windows. I used base game windows and then put horse ranch shutters next to them because they had this kind of cute light yellow swatch on it that I felt like matched perfectly. I always feel quite guilty when I use Strangerville in a build because I feel like a lot of people don't have Strangerville. Like it's one of the packs, probably one of the lesser bought packs. I don't hate Strangerville. I think the gameplay is actually kind of interesting it's just very repetitive, so it's not as easy to like use over and over again like things like parenthood might be because it just doesn't tie into your everyday gameplay like at all. And once you've done that Strangerville story once, like you've kind of done it and it's just not fun to do over and over. So if I were recommending a game pack, I would not recommend Strangerville just because the gameplay's not that 
good for like replayability. And the build stuff is weird because there's a combination of some like really stunning, amazing build mode items. Strangerville has absolutely perfect columns and spandrels. It has some of the best doors in the game, but like the rest of the furniture is weird lab stuff. So you can't really build like a full house with it because there's not furniture. It's like build mode, not buy mode that's good in Strangerville. And the world's kind of cool, but also it's like literally infected <laughs> because of the mother plant thing. So it's just a weird pack. Like I, I really wouldn't encourage you to buy it as like your first game pack. You know, I would get some more useful ones first. So all of that to say, I really do feel kind of bad when I use Strangerville. It's just, it's so good for a style like this though. It really works perfectly for this house. Otherwise though, I think some of my favorite features about the exterior are the huge wraparound porch and the greenhouse that I ended up adding. So just to address the other main issue with this one, there are just generally a lot of packs in this build. A lot of kits specifically, I used the greenhouse kit in this place because I thought because it's a sunflower house, we have to have like an actual greenhouse so we can really grow flowers for real. And then I had like the flower arranging table, that's from Seasons. I've got this cute picket fence from the backyard stuff pack. I've used a movie hangout front door. Like it really devolves quick. <laughs> Once you start using packs, you start using all the packs. But I, I just embraced it for the vibes because it turned out really cute in the end. I just always want to issue a little apology when I overdo it with the Sims packs because I know it's, it sucks because you can't download it and I'm sorry. We're kind of finally moving on to the interior now though and the staircase and the floor plan in this one took me ages. It's kind of a weird shape and I knew that I wanted it to be small. I knew I wanted to have a couple of small bedrooms upstairs, but like I didn't really know how to put the stairs and, and how to have it make sense. My first thought was to have the living room there next to the front door, but then it was so small and I didn't really know what to put in there because it was so tiny. And then I realized actually that little space is perfect for a teeny tiny kitchen. So I put the teeny tiny kitchen to the left of the door. We've got a big dining room out in front of the door. And then to the right, it becomes kind of like a big L-shaped living room with like couches and a TV and then like a game table in that sunroom space that I've got. We also have a very small office downstairs and a little tiny half bathroom. So just like a toilet and a sink. This layout probably could have made the house more spacious if I didn't close it off so much. Like I put walls and archways everywhere, but in this kind of house, I'm picturing it being very old. So I don't really want to have like one big open floor plan here. In fact, I don't even like big open floor plans most of the time. I much prefer stuff like this where there's kind of like dedicated spaces. Obviously in real life, it is nice to have the kitchen like in the living room sort of, so you can all be together all at once. But in The Sims, it doesn't matter. They don't sit together anyway. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. And so I just, I ignored it. I did manage to fit, I kind of forgot about this, but we have a huge bathroom upstairs. That upstairs hallway thing was really throwing me off for a while. I really did not know how I wanted it to be. <laughs> I, I tried so many different variants with the floor plan, but I got a huge bathroom upstairs and we managed to get three bedrooms plus an ensuite bathroom. This house is bigger than I remembered because I said in the beginning it was a one bathroom house. It's not. It's three bedrooms, three bathrooms. I'm a liar. <laughs> I thought it was just one. I don't know what I was talking about because I'm seeing three. And I guess if you count the office downstairs as a bedroom, it could be four bedrooms, but I didn't furnish it that way. I furnished it as an office instead. I really like having offices in my Sims houses. I just find it so useful to have that dedicated skill space because where else are you going to put all these things? It, I know I always say it, but there's there's just so many random skill items. You need a skill room. You just need something. <laughs> and so I always like to have one. We're kind of moving out to the backyard again for a second because I'm putting in that greenhouse that I talked about. And I love how the greenhouse windows look with this building. I just think it is absolutely stunning. All of the white with the yellow accents, it just, it looks so good together. I know that I built it, so I'm biased, but I really do think this place is pretty. And the greenhouse is functional as well. I don't know how many of you have this pack or are, like familiar with how the plant growing works and this Sims. But if you have seasons, obviously the season and the weather kind of affects your plants. Like certain plants don't grow in the winter time, for example. But if you have a greenhouse, it doesn't matter. You can grow anything at any season. And there's not like special gameplay with the greenhouse kit. The greenhouse kit is just decorative. It's just windows and a roof texture. You can make a greenhouse with base game windows and it still works the same. You don't even need to have it be enclosed. As long as there is a roof over the plant, they will grow regardless of season. So so you could literally have no walls, <laughs> just a floating roof and put it on top of a plant and it'll, 
still grow. So if you're doing any sort of like challenge, for example, and you're trying to grow plants quickly, or maybe you're trying to make money off of the plants, you don't need to have them be outside. You can sort of like cheat the system with seasons a little bit and make them grow in any season that way. Sometimes the plants glitch, but that's not related to the seasons problem. That's just because the plants glitch, <laughs> which I'm sure you're all very familiar with because the gardening skill in The Sims 4 has been bugged for years and they still have not fixed it. There's even new bugs popping up. There's a new bug with gardening where the plants won't be weeded. Like it'll have weeds, your sim will sit there and like infinitely pull at the weeds and nothing happens, they never stop. <sighs> So that's really cool. They haven't been doing the like resetting down to nothing glitch as much anymore, but of course we have a new one because it's The Sims 4 and there is always something going on. Now, what you are about to see is probably the biggest mistake that I made in this entire build. So I'm doing terrain paint and I'm doing it way too early. I always tell myself, Kayla, you have to do the terrain paint last because of the stupid, annoying terrain paint bug. It is a known glitch. It always happens. Everybody knows it. The terrain constantly glitches upon reload. So do not ever do terrain paint first. I tell myself this every single day. But in this house, I was so excited about the sunflower fields that I was like, no, no, I'll just do it now so I can see how it's gonna look. I wanna be able to envision it. I went through, I spent ages placing it all and guess what happened? I went to manage worlds because I was trying to show chat something. I was like live streaming and I was like, oh, I'll show you this real quick. I go to manage worlds and then I instantly realized, oh my God, I never should have gone to manage worlds because then when I came back, all of the terrain paint was gone. So I spent so much time. You can see, I just cut to all the flowers being there and like I cut out all the terrain paint stuff because it's gone anyway. But I also went through and hand placed all of those flowers. So it was a long process, but you can kind of see a bit better what we're trying to make this look like now. I did have to go back and redo all of the paint at the end. And it just, every time I looked outside, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so if you've never seen this bug before, I just want to say you should be be so, so happy. You are so lucky that it hasn't affected you. This has been a glitch for years in The Sims 4, and I talk about it all the time because it always gets me. But the issue is that sometimes when you reload the lot, maybe it's coming back from Manage Worlds, maybe it's reloading into the save just in general. So you like close the game for the night, you come back tomorrow, your terrain paint's gone. Anytime you reload the lot, there's a chance your terrain paint's going to disappear and delete itself. Of course, that's what happened here. There are ways to work around this slightly, maybe build. Like if I was smart, I would have saved this lot to my library before I went to Manage Worlds because then I could have just placed it down again and still had it there. Of course, I didn't do that, so I couldn't. <laughs> and then like after all of the testing, maybe I closed without saving and come back. It didn't matter. It was all gone. It was all gone, you couldn't get it back. And it just, it made me wanna cry a little bit, but we pushed through. I just ended up redoing it again, all at the end. I don't understand how this is still happening. After all of this time, it's literally been years and it's never been fixed, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about something else. So we're working on the kitchen now at this point. And you can see I've done a lot of experimenting with the cabinet layout. So I was using the country kitchen kit cabinets and these I have such conflicting opinions about. I really like how all of the different cabinets variants are different because it makes it so you can kind of do a fancy layout in the kitchen, but it also makes it hard to fit them together because you don't always want to have like that much open shelving and you just, I, I wish that I could like choose more. And then the end pieces, only the end piece is closed. There's like a closed cabinet with curtains in it. And I like that I would use it everywhere except the end pieces like smaller than the regular cabinet size because it would clip in the wall otherwise, but it just makes it so complicated because then you have to like alt place them and it doesn't fit. So I was just really annoyed at the cabinets and I tried a lot of different things and I ended up with this. <laughs> I did use a kind of fun floral tile. That tile is from the rent pack, believe it or not. I've got a cute little breakfast nook because Horse Ranch has these adorable yellow chairs and I'm just warning you now, we went all in with the yellow in this house. I took it so far when I was decorating this place. I, I kind of like embraced the meme, I guess. I know some people that were watching my Twitch stream were kind of annoyed by how yellow it was, but I think it's fun to be silly and just embrace the theme. <laughs> So I really went for it. We're decorating the dining room first. I actually love the shape of this room. We have like this beautiful, long, skinny room with pretty double doors at the end, right out to the balcony. This makes so much sense for a formal dining room in a house like this. I just struggled a lot with the color of the rug and like what kind of rug to use because obviously I knew I wanted it to be yellow, but I wanted it to be like yellow and old. 
at the same time. <laughs> and there wasn't really a lot of options that I felt like kind of worked. I did end up using one from Growing Together and I felt kind of silly about that because I always use that Growing Together rug. And then it's yellow and blue and like all my houses are yellow and blue, but it was mostly just that room that had it, okay? <laughs> so it was fine. That was more the old school vibes that I liked about it. In here, I also managed to use the paranormal chairs. I don't know if I've ever used that yellow swatch in those chairs before. They have some like normal wooden colors, but they have a yellow one and a pink one and I've used the pink swatch of these chairs before but the yellow is like a little bit too vibrant for me so I never really used it before. I also put a paranormal chair in here like in the corner as an accent chair. We've got things like plants and little clocks and artwork on the walls. I put a sunflower on the dining table of course because you have to in a house like this and once I had done this room I felt so much better about the whole house. I always say this but like sometimes I when I start to furnish I feel quite lost about what the vibes of the house are going to be, but once you figure out one good room, it's like, oh, well that, that's it. Like that's the vibe, that's perfect. <laughs> so we can just try to emulate that and continue that style around. So after I did this room, I was like, we're golden. Literally, we're golden. It's perfect. <laughs> so most of the house looks kind of like this. Uh, there was some controversy also about the rug in the living room, which we'll get to. If you hate it, I'm so sorry, but I'll explain my thought process, I promise. I just point it out now because it is sitting there. <laughs> so you're probably staring at it and you're like, that's horrible. <laughs> we do have a very, very, very small entryway. Uh, one thing that I did in here that was kind of weird also is that I actually ended up putting a litter box underneath the stairs. I put like a little tiny cat door and then I shoved the laser litter box from my first pet stuff down there. And that's fine because your Sims don't have to get to it. It's just hidden. They don't have to think about it. It's funny for me to hear from people about like what their Sims litter box habits are because I'm coming to you as a person who has three cats and multiple litter boxes in her house, obviously. <laughs> Like when you've got this many cats, you've got a bunch of litter boxes. And so I'm not really uncomfortable with litter boxes just being around in the house. Like you clean them, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. I know some people think cats are gross. I think the cats are quite clean because they clean up after themselves. So in real life, I'm not too bothered by litter box placement, but in the Sims, I'm like, oh, I don't want to place a litter box. Hide that thing. <laughs> some people in my Twitch chat were saying they put the litter box outside, like by the fence next to the garbage can, just like out of the way. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind for their Sims builds. And I thought that was so funny, but I, I did hide one underneath the staircase, partially because I had built the whole house and like already furnished everything when I decided to add a cat in. And then I was like, oh no, where does the litter box go? There's no room. So I just went and hit it. But anyway, we're doing the living room now. And so in this room, this one, she was a process. I had no idea what I was trying to do. All I knew was I wanted to use this kind of floral rug. This one is from Discover University. It's a beautiful big square rug. It It's a little bit like more, modern leaning, like more contemporary than the rest of the house kind of is, but it's yellow and it's floral. And this house is, is yellow flowers. Like that's the whole thing. So I wanted to use it and I was trying to find a set of couches that matched. I started with paranormal. I kind of like set them there just to look at them. I kind of have that outlook sometimes when I'm furnishing where if I can't decide, I'm like, you know what? Just leave it there. Let's stare at it for a bit and like do the rest of the room and see how we're feeling. I, I didn't like them. I loved having the blue accents and I also liked how that couch had like a yellow throw and some pillows that kind of matched. But like style wise, I don't think the blue really fit in here that well. So I ended up switching it into the horse ranch chairs, which are worse. They're like yellow and stripey, <laughs> which you might hate more, but I felt like it worked better. So I did that. We have the pretty games table in there. I used like a games table that came from Get Together. It's very old. It's like wooden, but none of the games tables work. Like they're, they're all very specific in style. Most of them are kind of modern and strange in color. So I used the old one and I put the yellow chairs on it. My favorite part of this whole room by far are the built-ins on either side of the fireplace. I just think that it looks so good. The little bookshelves underneath the window, they fit in perfect with the fireplace. You can't tell they're clipping. I have plenty of space to put clutter. I had like a chicken I put in there. There was a bunny. <laughs> I put all kinds of plants and books and I just thought this looked so good. You might also notice the TV above the fireplace. It looks like a picture. It's a TV. It's one of the frame TVs. We got this one in the modern Lux kit. So again, million packs in this build. I'm so sorry, but it looks really cute because it has the yellow flowers. So it fit like so perfectly here. And then it's nice to have the function of a TV in the living room. So I wanted to have one. I also put a bunch of weird little My First Pet Stuff blinds across all the windows. They're kind of like this light blue color. I don't really know if I like them, but 
I kept them, so hopefully you don't hate it. <laughs> this whole house is kind of strange, but sometimes strange is good. You gotta just like commit to it, I think. I do like the shape of the living room though, and I love the games table in there. I really like the table like in the windows because it reminds me of my grandparents' old house. In my grandparents' old house, they had kind of like a bay window in their living room, and my grandma had a literal game table there. It was like a table that had a checkerboard on top, but you could like lift it and store the stuff under it. And we always played cards there at this table, like literally nonstop. We were always sitting at that table. So the game table surrounded by the windows. This is like a little bit fancier than my grandma's house was. It's not, it wasn't this big, but I really loved that. I thought it was kind of a cute nod to their old house. I've also been really trying to make an effort to put more games tables in my Sims builds because it's one of those items that's just kind of weird and most often doesn't look that good, but like functionally it's really fun. If you haven't seen that table before, the base game has two of them. They're kind of like <laughs> black and gray folding tables in the base game, so you probably don't like them, but in the base game you can play cards on them, you can play a couple games, but if you've got other packs, like for example if you've got Growing Together, it comes with puzzles. If you've got Get Together, it comes with Don't Wake the Llama, which is kind of like Jenga. So you can play a ton of games on them, and it's a fun little feature for your sims to do, so I've really been trying hard to add more in. Plus, a lot of times when your sims have parties, it like forces you as one of the tasks to use a games table, and I just never have one, so anyway, I put one here for you. We're working on the tiny office now. I ended up putting a desk, a computer, Computer, some books, and an easel in here. One of my favorite parts of this room was the little canvases behind the easel. Those are so cute. They're from Eco Lifestyle, which I know, another pack, right? But <laughs> they're so good. The base game has some canvases to lean against the wall too, but they're either blank or like really fancy, intricate landscape paintings of like Italian seaside cityscapes. The Eco Lifestyle ones are a little bit more simple and they're like portrait paintings. And so I wanted to use that behind the little easel. We're finally moving upstairs though, and we've got three bedrooms to do up here. The first one is gonna be this little nursery. It's kind of got the yellow and blue vibes, of course. And this one, I made a nursery specifically because some people in my Twitch chat were begging me to use the werewolf's bassinet. I started off with just having a regular crib and they were like, no, no Kayla, not the crib. So we ended up basing this whole room around the one werewolf bassinet, which admittedly was a good idea because this bassinet is so cute. It's like so Soft. They've got the pretty like cushion in there for the baby. It has like a yellow little curtain canopy above the bed It's got like a little sheep and a moon hanging from it. It is really cute Like you got to admit the werewolf pack you would never expect it to have really good stuff for kids But they've got a bunk bed. They've got a toddler bed and a bassinet They like really kind of killed it in werewolves with kids stuff And that just to me seems like the last pack you would expect to have good kids stuff in but it actually kind of does if you didn't know this all all of the occult types, except for mermaids, because they didn't get anything good, all of the other occult types have a special bassinet. So there's like a special vampire bassinet, there's even a special alien bassinet. We've got one from the Realm of Magic pack for spellcasters, and if you're playing with those packs, if you have a baby with a werewolf, you can't tell if the newborn is an occult type yet, like when they're born there aren't any signs until they get older, but they will tell you based on the bassinet it spawns in. So say you have triplets with a with a vampire. Two are in a regular bassinet and one is in the vampire bassinet. That one is a vampire. It's a 50-50 shot when you've got kids with an occult type, but that's how you can tell when they're first born is what bassinet the game spawns for them. Again, unless you're talking about a mermaid. All of the other occults got one except mermaids. I complain about mermaids all the time, but they really failed them. It's so sad because they could have been so good and they just, they don't have the same care and like level of gameplay and detail as the other occults do. Even aliens got a bassinet, and aliens came in the first ever pack. They were in Get to Work years ago, 10 years ago, and they got a bassinet. Anyway, sorry, I'll stop. We're moving into the primary bedroom now though, and this one, of course, we had to use the sunflower bed. If you haven't seen this bed before, it is base game. It's actually a career reward from the artist career. Whenever I use this bed, I get so many questions like, oh my god, what pack is that from? But no, it's, ju it's just base game. You might recognize that because it's based off of a real life, very famous painting. This bed has three swatches. There's one that's sunflowers, one that's starry night, and one that's just red. <laughs> just plain red. I don't know why it only has the three swatches. It's actually a really nice bed. I wish that it had some more, but it's a career unlockable, so it's not like high priority, I guess, as far as adding swatches in a swatch update. I usually cut out the bathrooms from my speed builds because they're just so long, and it's like, do you need to watch me furnish a couple bathrooms? They're mostly boring, but you're watching at this point me trying to figure out where to put the litter box because I decided to add in a little cat tree in the primary bedroom, and then I was like, oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> I must have a litter box and it doesn't fit anywhere. But I managed to sneak them in in a couple places. At this point, we have one bedroom left to furnish upstairs. And this one, I want it to be a kid's bedroom again because I wanted this to be a very useful family house. And it's kind of a big bedroom as well. It's like way bigger than I initially realized. And I found in Horse Ranch, there's a couple really cute beds that have like subtle yellow swatches to them. So I use those both in here. They're like horse themed. So this is like the horse girl room, I decided. We've got these two horse beds and then like horse decor everywhere. I used the horse ranch dollhouse. We got like horse things on the wall. <laughs> Considering this place was built in the horse ranch world, I felt like I have to have at least something horse themed, right? So I did it in the kids bedroom. I really had fun with this one too, because I, I don't normally use these kind of funky swatches and certainly not together. So it was kind of fun for me to pair them together. I did use a lot of the pastel pop kit in here too. I've got like the pastel pastel pop kit rug, which is technically meant to be a cookie, but I was pretending it is a flower because it was like a circle that was bumpy and it was yellow. So I was like, oh, it's, it's not a cookie, it's petals. <laughs> it's a flower, sure. So I was I was trying to imagine that it matched our flower theme. Sometimes you just gotta use your imagination in The Sims. And when you pretend, it all comes together nicely, okay? So usually in these speed builds, I use them kind of like a podcast and give you a slight little life update. So here's my fun and exciting news. I went to New York this weekend. When you're seeing this, I'm still in New York. I went for the whole weekend to stay at my friend's house. But the other reason was to go and see the Stardew Valley concert. If any of you are are fans of Stardew Valley, you might know about this already, but they've got like a live orchestra on tour playing the Stardew Valley soundtrack. And one of my best friends lives in New York City and she bought tickets for the New York show. And so we're going together and I'm so excited. I'm recording this before, but when you're seeing it, it's, it's after the show already happened. Unfortunately, the show is the same day the new stuff pack comes out, which is like the most inconvenient timing because we bought these tickets like months ago, you know? And now this Sims pack is coming out the same day is the show, but I very smartly a long time ago booked my flights the morning of the show. So I'm flying to New York at like 6 a.m. on Thursday. The show is not until the nighttime, so we should be fine. I live in Orlando, so it's a couple hour flight for me. I'll spend the day with my friend, see the show, spend the weekend with her in the city and then come home. The only problem is the Sims pack is coming out. So when the pack comes out this week, I should get early access on Wednesday and I should be able to like really, really, really try and record all day. So hopefully I can still have videos out on the pack. And for you, it will seem like nothing has happened. For you, it will all be fine. For me, <laughs> I will be gone and miss the release. Unfortunately, I also can't stream on release day. This is the first time a pack has come out and I haven't streamed on release day in like years. I think the only other time that I didn't live stream on release day for a pack was when Cottage Living came out. And that was because Dan was moving to America. So I was in England helping him pack and move. And, and so we didn't stream that day because we were like actively moving countries together. <laughs> and so I didn't stream on that one, but a stuff pack's not as big of a deal as, as Cottage Living was. It's still fun, but it, you know, less of a, a big release to be missing, I guess. But I'm kind of sad to not be able to stream that day because I love to stream on the release days. But um, if you like my Twitch streams, I'll be playing the pack a bunch this week. Like, I guess tomorrow when you're seeing this video, I'll be live uh, on Twitch playing with the pack. So stay tuned for that. We always joke about how The Sims keeps releasing things when I'm busy. <laughs> and it is, it does feel kind of laughable, right? Because I don't go anywhere. I don't leave the house. I don't go anywhere. I booked this trip months ago. I'm not going anywhere else until I have like TwitchCon. But <laughs> the one trip I've got, oh, the same day your flight is, that's when the pack's coming out. Like, anyway, it's, it is funny, but um, I'll still make videos on it, so don't worry. <laughs> I guess when you're seeing this, I've already posted the videos on it, so you already know that, but you can go back and watch them. You can see my review and everything. I'm sure I posted one. But at this point, we're just going through and doing some last minute touches here on the build. You'll see I'm going through and adding in a couple things like the flower arranging table, because of course it comes in yellow. Uh, I got some little pots details everywhere. We've got like a grill and a dining table outside. Uh, I went through and added a bunch more landscaping in the back. After we had the terrain paint incident, I had to stop. <laughs> so I did half the landscaping, had the terrain paint glitch, and then I was like, no, I'm not doing any more plants. So I left the place half landscaped for like the whole video because <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to go back and do the landscaping until the very end. Well, now we're at the very end. So we're going back and fixing all of that. I'll fix the terrain paint finally, but I won't make you watch me do it again. I, I cut out 
out the second terrain paint attempt because you don't need to see that twice. <laughs> I felt so bad for my Twitch stream because it took me a long time. Like when you see it sped up, it's not so bad. This build took me like six hours in real life. You're seeing it in 30 minutes, but imagine how long it was for me to do every single line of the terrain paint. <laughs> and some people had to sit through that twice. I had to sit through it twice. It was pitiful, it really was. But we're pretty much done with the build now. I'm just doing some last minute things. I got trash cans, I got mailbox, I got the thermostat so the place is fully functional, don't worry. And now that we're finished with the speed build, I wanna pop back into the game and show you a tour of the whole finished building. I always say this, but it's kind of hard to see it and like fully understand when it's sped up this much. So I wanna pop back in and show you real time. And this way you can see the sunflower field finish with the terrain paint accurately in there. So I built this in Chestnut Ridge. Unfortunately, I did have to evict the family that lives here on this Biscuits Bastion lot to do it, but it was worth it because the place is pretty, okay? Miraculously, the terrain paint did not delete itself this time when I loaded in, but that's fine. <laughs> so this is what the place looks like when it's fully finished. I added a couple things at the end that I didn't record. Uh, for example, I put this really cute archway to walk up to the front of the building. And then this is some debug fencing. I had to use debug because it's the only way to put it on the edge of the lot. I had to like sneakily move objects, place it at the very edge because you can't put regular fences at the edge. But I think it helps to have something in front of the flowers. And then these are all of the fields of sunflowers. You can see I put like a row of dirt underneath each one. And these are all the small sunflowers sized up. So normally they're only this big. I sized them up one to use this size. In real life, sunflowers can be really, really tall. And the other thing is that uh, technically speaking, the sunflowers do face the sun. They're facing the sun right now. The sun's over there. You can see by the shadows. So it's fine. <laughs> but there were a lot of questions about that. And I was like, oh, we're not worrying about that. Okay, chat, because we need to have these just look good from the front. Thankfully, it is technically good, so. It's okay. I also put some bees back here, just kind of as like a fun gameplay feature. We snuck the mailbox in at the front. I love this little bench right here. You can access the porch from this side. If you come around the back of the house, you can see some more of the backyard. We've got a very small little patio here. This is the castle kit flooring, unfortunately, but we've got a chess table. We've got a grill. I do have some yellow chairs around this table. In the back, we've got a small greenhouse with some planter boxes and the flower arranging table. I was imagining like maybe they grow saplings in here to put outside in the fields, but obviously functionally in game, you would just grow all of your plants in here and this is just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> but it helps fit the story, okay? I do have a swing set in the back and I put chickens because I realized I never put chickens anywhere. Let's put some chickens. So we have those. I love how big the porch is. You can see we have this huge wraparound porch. There's a couple little rocking chairs. We've got on this side, some like sprinkler systems for fires, another chess table. And I put another flower arranging table here too. And then when you actually come in the house, you walk straight into this little front door space. It's only a small entryway. That's where the litter box is underneath the stairs down there. I put a little cat door for it. To the left, we have the kitchen and breakfast nook. And I think this is my favorite part of the house. I was so nervous about how skinny the room was. I was like, what are you gonna put in there? Nothing's gonna work. And actually, I think the kitchen fits just fine. It's got like some cute cabinetry, cute color schemes. I really, I really just liked it a lot. Then when you come straight forward, we have the huge dining room. I love the table and the view of these doors. I think it's just perfect. When you come to the way right, the best part is the little bookshelf around the fireplace. We have the super cute living room space. I did put things like yarn and game stuff. I put extra board games here, plus the real games table. The cat has a scratching post. Uh, you can come into the bathroom right here. There's a small half bathroom downstairs with just a toilet and a sink. Through this doorway, you've got access to the office space. So we have some bookshelves, a computer, and the easel that we talked about. And then when you go way upstairs, we've got this kind of interesting hallway. Originally, I was thinking about putting in this one by one nook laundry, but I felt like it didn't really fit. And also laundry is just kind of annoying. So I put instead like a, a shelf, I guess, like built-ins. I did something like this for my Not So Berry Challenge house recently. I haven't posted that on YouTube yet, but I will soon. In that house, I have a lot of collectibles. I've got like all kinds of snow globes and the semi capsules. So I made like a built-in nook with cabinets and shelves to put those things on. And I thought it worked quite well for collectible space. And this counter is bigger. So you could put like the frogs on it or like bigger collectibles. But I thought it was kind of a cute thing to just kind of hide in the corner. Uh, to the right, this 
is the main like primary bathroom for everybody in the house to use. We've got a huge counter space, shower tub combo. I loved this shelf above the toilet. It's kind of a weird shape, but I think it works. We have the little nursery, which, oh my God, it deleted my cabinets. That's so annoying. <laughs> They're there on the gallery, but they deleted when I reloaded the lot. I had bookshelves there, I promise. The baby reads a lot, way above its grade level. But <laughs> we have the nursery. They've got a rocking chair and like a changing table and stuff. This is that kid's room with the beautiful horse theme. I put a picture table right in the middle. They can still walk around this fine. I just kind of liked the table being in the middle of the room. It reminded me of my own childhood bedroom. We had like a chalkboard table that was tiny like this. And that was like right in the center of my room when I was like four years old. And I always think about that. So I, I just put it here. I don't know if it's weird, but it, it does make a good use of the space, I guess. And then lastly, we have the primary bedroom with the sunflower theme. Of course, they've got the bed and more sunflowers over here. They've got an extra fireplace and a little cat tree, and they have their own ensuite bathroom up here. And that is the full building. It's not too, too big, but hopefully it's useful for you, like functionally, if you wanted to download it. I know that most people can't because it has like a million packs. And for that, I really, really apologize. It's just called Sunflower Farm on the gallery. Uh, I wasn't kidding about the millions of packs though. And it costs like 130,000 simoleons. So if you're interested. My name's just Lil Simsy on the gallery. That's the horse thing I was talking about in the beginning. I'm serious. There's like a literal horse rock formation back there. <laughs> I always forget that's there, but it's kind of cool. And that is the fully finished build. So thank you for watching and letting me just ramble to you about the Sims for half an hour. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay tuned because tomorrow we're going to be playing some Sims over on my Twitch channel. We'll try and play with the new pack a little bit more. I think if you want to see that live, my name's just Lil Simsy on Twitch. Make sure you follow me so you don't miss it and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. I even put on a yellow shirt for this. I was like really trying to channel and complete the vibes <laughs> for the whole video.